is 20 hours GMT. Good evening and welcome to News at 8 on Joy News and Multi TV. We are also on Sky Digital Platform 235 on ABN across Europe. My name is Aisha Ibrahim. In this edition, taps in Adenton begin to flow after the commissioning of the Bone Water Works, but only for a few hours, leaving residents disappointed. Our figures from the Ministry of Health's Adolescent Development Report reveals as many as over 16,000 adolescents underwent abortion in 2011. And Kolebu Teaching Hospital announces strategic plan to enhance its operations in 2015. And business livestock traders adopt wait and see approach as customers filing slowly to buy their words. On international front, Nigerian Army places ban on vehicular movement in Borno and Yoba states from Christmas Eve to Sunday to avoid militant attacks. All these and many more in our Christmas Eve edition of News at 8. Welcome back to the news and we start on a rather alarming note where abortion is a rather touchy issue whereas it is illegal in most countries it is often prescribed to save pregnant women with complications but what are the complications associated with abortions are you aware that a huge percentage of all abortions taking place in Ghana are performed on adolescents now Bonahaf regional correspondent Nestor Kafui Ajuma has been exploring the issue and has come through with this report. A large number of adolescents are involved in abortion every year in Ghana, according to the Adolescent Health and Development Program report. 16,182 girls went through abortion in 2011. 10,785 in 2010 and 8,717 in 2009. Many of these teenagers face high risk of experiencing post-abortion infections through the vagina to the uterus and the fallopian tube. This is caused by either the spread of unrecognized STIs in the uterus during abortion or microorganisms on the surgical instruments which are inserted into the uterus. Researchers say teens may be more susceptible to infections because their bodies are not yet fully developed and do not even produce pathogens that are found in the cervical mucus of older women that can protect them from infections. According to experts, most teenage and safe abortions take parental involvement. Due to that, the parents of these teenagers are not forewarned about the physical and emotional complications their children might Some emotional reactions of these teenagers who indulge in unsafe abortions include depression, anger, and guilt. Most adolescents think that abortions, whether safe or unsafe, end when the pregnancy has been terminated. But this is not the case, as it takes more than that for an abortion to be completed, as asserted by a lecturer at Intotroso Community Nursing Training School, Esther Manifie. When women have social trauma, if, if the person does an abortion, the woman does an abortion, she may have some psychological or social trauma that she will be thinking about the abortion she has done and this thing will live with the woman so unless she gets somebody to counsel her she will be living with this psychological trauma till she dies and you can also have intermittent abortion that is where the pregnancy that a woman would take at any time will come out by itself. Supposing when I was in my youthful age, I used to do abortion frequently. Now I've trained my uterus to be that. So now that I've gotten Mr. Wright to marry, I want pregnancy or a child for Mr. Wright. But because I've trained my uterus to be like every month or a, a frequent time, I have to abort. Now the uterus is trained to that, so now I need the baby. The uterus will not permit me to have the pregnancy. 
in order to help Ghana achieve the MDG goal four and five, Global Media Foundation, a human rights and anti-corruption media advocacy organization in Sunyang, is educating SHS students on the need for safe abortion. The CEO of Global Media Foundation organization, Rafael Godlavahenu, said abortion accounts for 15 percent of maternal deaths, which is impeding Ghana's efforts at achieving MDG four and five, which primarily aims at reducing maternal mortality by 70 percent in 2015. So as organization, what we can do is to increase public education for them to know where they can go for safe abortion services. And then the project is advocating for young people access to safe abortion and contraceptive services in the Afro region. And we are targeting almost 28 senior and junior high schools where we'll be establishing reproductive health clubs in these schools. He thinks the criminalization of abortion over the years has contributed to maternal deaths recorded. Nesta Kafuya Jomez report from the Bonoafo region. So we're stuck on with health, but this time we're moving away from the Bonahafu region. We're coming back to Accra, where the Kolobu Teaching Hospital will, from January next year, announce strategic plans to deal with various internal lapses to enhance operations of the hospital. Now, describing 2014 as a turbulent year, the chief executive of the hospital, Dr. Gilbert Buckle, said the hospital is in talks with Parliament on how to manage its service charges and other to run the institution more efficiently. Turbulent year for the hospital this year, 2014. I was outside of Kolebu when I saw pictures in the newspaper with nurses in red bands. Irrespective of the turbulence of this year, we want to recognize that we have worked hard. Congratulations to all of us sitting here and we extend congratulations to all those on the wards currently, those at home, those on leave, everybody who works here, we extend a big word of congratulations to all of them. Dr. Gilbert Bacow also indicated that the hospital's management is making effort at eliminating challenges the institution is currently facing and encouraged members of staff to continue to work hard to make rebranding of the hospital fruitful. We have been able to secure financial clearance for 462 staff. So all your sub BNC money, slowly, slowly, we'll get it back to you. It's very important. Between the two of them, Director of Finance, we've had a discussion with Parliament. We'll also see how we manage our service charges, etc., to run the institution more efficiently. Board Chairman of the Kolebu Teaching Hospital, Professor Anthony Mauli Sala, said findings of investigations into issues that led to the unrest at the hospital have all been captured in a new strategic framework which will be implemented in due course. According to him, even though CAM has returned to the hospital, more could be done to thoroughly address outstanding issues. We've mapped our strategies for 2015. 2015, we are going to start implementing. In fact, we want to make sure that, to a very large extent, Kolebu wins its of of a Ghana, Ghana government subvention. That's it. So we are optimistic that the plans we have, the strategic plan and framework and so on, once we implement that, uh, the resources that Kolebu will have will be enhanced. That's number one. Number two, uh, who are the people working here? The workers, to some extent, they don't have some medical benefits. We are going to look at that. We started looking at uh, the benefits that they will get, so that at least the people who are here, when they fall sick, they can be treated. Uh, we are looking at uh, Provident Fund, and we are looking at having a big uh, fundraising for Kolebu to have millions and millions of cities so that we can use that to fix some of the places. Meanwhile, the hospital has organized an end-of-year ceremony to reward staff who distinguished themselves in the year 2014. Daniel Hansen Lakai of the technical department came tops as the overall best worker for the year 2014.
businesses do that as they can also have fun. Now away from health, let's now do some journalism. And as the country prepares to usher in the new year, the United Nations is urging Ghanaian journalists to explore more on the Ebola virus in order to ward off any possible outbreak in 2015. Now, National Officer for the UN Information Center in Accra, Cynthia Pratt, said the media remains an important partner for the UN in its interventions to save lives and improve the well-being of people around the world. She is therefore calling on journalists to explore further opportunities of collaboration with the UNIC, especially in the area of development journalism. It's been a lot of challenges. Um, one of them has been the Ebola crisis in the four West African countries. But as you can read or hear from the, um, some of the reports that are coming out, the United Nations is doing quite well, uh, mobilizing international support, both funding logistics and human resources to curb the crisis in, that, in those countries. Um, there's been some conflict around the world but we've also achieved some successes and um, relatively I would say the world has been a very peaceful um, place to live in. The media, she explained, should promote government's accountability to the people as an important component of democratic governance which is of huge interest to the UN. She said even though the UN has chalked enormous success, the year 2014 has been very challenging. 2015, we at the United Nations, we expect a lot of development-oriented stories from you. Um, we want you to go and dig the stories that affect directly people and bring out some of the issues that are affecting people in our communities out. Let's begin to question the institutions that are responsible um, to cater for the needs of these vulnerable people. Let's bring them, let's question them. Um, let's question institutions and people who are supposed to lead the vulnerable from the state in which they found themselves. The National Information Officer also added that the UN is working with numerous non-governmental and civil society organizations in West Africa to bring the increasing cases of Ebola down. Ya Oforua Asani Pesa, a news editor at the Ghana News Agency, on her part observed that the media's ability to produce development-oriented content is dependent on welfare of journalists and as such should be taken more seriously by media organizations. If you ask a reporter to go out there to fish for information, at least there should be transport. We need transportation to get to event organizers to carry out our duties and transport to get back to work. But in, in, in most cases, these are not there. And so these are some of the challenges that will push somebody out of an institution. I would take a um, GNA, for instance, you know, GNA did a great work in special, specialization in the 80s, 1984 to 1990. All the reporters we had were specialized in economics, health, agriculture, international relations, and, and, and that kind of thing. But along the line, because of the working conditions, they all left. Meanwhile, the global celebration of the 70th anniversary of the United Nations, which aims at honoring the historic breadth of the United Nations development, security and human rights work, and ultimately unite the international community, is slated for next year. It therefore invites its members to plan and organize special commemorated events and outreach activities to celebrate the historic event. Ridwan Karim Dini Osman, Joy News, Accra. So food for thought for journalists, now jumping to Ikumfi, where the people of that constituency in the central region have asked their member of parliament, Abe Kukrensel, why promises made to them have not been fulfilled. The promises range from roads, school blocks, health facilities, water and electrification, among others.
This came to light at a public forum on MPs accountability organized by the Center for Democratic Development, CDD Ghana, in conjunction with the Coalition of Domestic Election Observers, Kodeo Adekunfi, in the central region. According to the citizens, though they were given the assurance during the 2012 electioneering campaign to see major development in the area, no key project had been realized after two years. They therefore want to know from their MP when all promised projects will actually take off. Youth and employment, if you are one man, will be a great name of our team. Due to the immigration, uh, army, police, say if you are welcome, we move it to the man, Uncle Mianzi. I shall stop all the lighting, ma'am, we go to the fair room. Say, say, my wife could do one with you. But the MP for the area, Beku Krenzel, insists there have been challenges along the way in his bid to ensure the area gets its share of development. <laughs> He, however, maintained plans are advanced to ensure all promises made are fulfilled. The CDD coordinator in charge of parliamentary strengthening, Regina Ofriwa Manfo, however, speaking to Joy News, urged constituents to continue to demand accountability from their members of parliament since they take advantage of elections to make numerous promises which many fail to fulfill. She called on the electorate to vote based on issues and assess their MPs to help make informed choices. The purpose is to help constituents to demand accountability and that is very key because during elections a lot of promises are made but after elections we don't go back to check whether they have been able to fulfill them or not and we just take it as a campaign message, campaign message. So this time is to help the constituents demand accountability from their elected representatives. They should vote based on issues, whether the MP will be able to deliver the commitments that the MP has made to them or not. They should use that to judge the performance of the MP. Georgina Akhiris reports for June. So if you just joined us, we're still watching News at 8 on Joy News. We'll be back shortly with more. So welcome back to Join News at 8 and now to other stories and the Christmas fever appears to be kicking in after all here in Accra. Now vehicular traffic was at its peak on Christmas Eve in most parts of the capital but contrary to the usual recklessness exhibited by drivers on the road during such build-up, Augustina AMSC reports drivers put on their best behaviour. The busy streets may not necessarily mean people are having the time of their lives this Christmas, but it does give an indication that people are warming up to the season. The central business district of Accra was not only packed with shoppers, but also with vehicles. Central police station through to Tudu, drivers were locked up in traffic. Surprisingly, they put on their best behavior despite having spent hours in queue. At the, the, the traffic is just very, very tedious and... Um it's quite very bad for us and most people are complaining uh, it's Christmas time but there's nothing good in town too so traffic is very very bad. The traffic is too much I don't know unless you find out almost four hours. Other motorists however said the traffic situation this year is much better than that of the previous years. Um, circle is not good but within Accra it's not bad compared to uh, previous years I think it's better. Yeah, I think it's normal. It's normal compared to the the the, the, the occasion, uh, compared to the previous traffic situation, and then the the Xmas mood. I think it's not all that. Uh, I mean, tedious as we expect it to be. Mm -hmm. The reasons for this huge presence in Accra Central Business Districts may vary, but one thing is certain. It has a connection with Christmas. Agustina Nanajua Ayima sees report for Joy News.
Now, residents of Adenton were looking forward to a full day of water flowing through their taps today after President Mahama commissioned the phone expansion project on Tuesday. But the excitement was not last all day. Latifi Dries, who visited the community, reports residents are rather disappointed by the move. Water has for decades been a luxury for residents of Adenta and its environs. They have over the period had to depend on water tanker operators such as Dela for water. And although other tanker operators fear a restoration of water to the area would put them out of business, Dela thinks otherwise. Why is that? Because people will have water in their houses. They will have water flowing through their pipes. You think they will still come to you for water? Yeah, because if you don't get it, unless you come and say you don't want water, mm. yeah, so I'll go for it, give you. When President Mahama on Tuesday commissioned the water expansion project at Pong, the people of Adenta and its environs, including those in the eastern region, were expected to have water flow through their taps. Mavis Annan, a resident of Adenta, was excited about the commissioning, which she thought was going to change the lives of residents like her. It's almost a year because since I born my Esther, water has not been flowing. And it's almost one year now. Yeah, Esther, so. It's almost one year now. So it was only Thursday evening. We heard that the president said water will be flowing in and around Adenta. Yeah, so. In the evening, we were here when the water was flowing. Then people were saying that the president said it in the morning. So that's what we are saying. And then since then, water has not come. But the excitement was short-lived. They opened it. And about six months ago, five months, they opened it. But from there off, last time I wasn't here, they said they opened it. When I came back, two days it's off. The residents are cautiously optimistic the situation will soon change so that children as young as Esther can have a proper shower daily. Latif Idris, John News, Adenta. Well, in a related development, President Mahama is asking the public to cultivate the habit of promptly paying their bills to enable the utility companies provide them quality services. This, he explained, is due to the fact that the companies have been weaned of government assistance. Hence, they will have to rely solely on the bills they collect. Now, the president made the comments at the commissioning of a 20 million gallon per day water facility at Pong to serve parts of Accra and the eastern region. It is good to have clean drinking water, but it costs money to put in the equipment to produce that water, clean it, and transmit it to you. The little you can do is to pay your water bill so that the Ghana Water Company can use that money not only to maintain the plants that have been put in, but also to put in new plants to continue meeting the demand for clean drinking water. And so as people are going to open their taps soon, in Adenta and all those areas I mentioned and sea water flowing. Remember too that at the end of the month, a bill from Ghana Water Company will follow. And as sweet as the water is to drink, so should the bill also be sweet to pay. Because government has decided that is no longer giving sovereign guarantees to state-owned enterprises to borrow money for their capital projects. And so we've asked all of them to open debt service accounts in which they will escrow a part of their revenues to service any debts that government has taken on their behalf. And so the only way that they can keep up with providing all this beautiful equipment and with providing water and electricity to all our people is that the bills that we're supposed to pay we also live up to our national responsibility, our responsibility as citizens, and pay those bills so that these utilities can continue to provide us with the service that we deserve.
And now the predominantly farming community of Bogaji in the Adakla district of the Volta region appears to have been abandoned in terms of development. Now the community lacks basic amenities including portable drinking water, a clinic and toilet facilities. Emanuela Agueda and Beauty Jamesi who have lived all their lives in the community say this situation makes life difficult for them. Houses made of mud are a common feature in the farming community of Adakropogaji, 20 kilometers from the Volta region capital, Ho. Here, there are only two boreholes, but one is not in use, and residents do not even use this water to cook. They gave us some pipe, but the pipe is not good. Salt is inside there, so they don't want to drink it. Even though the water we are drinking, it is not good for us to drink it. <laughs> 13 year old Emanuela and her friends prefer to fetch water from this water source. They have to walk a long distance through the bushes to the water side. They, however, have to keep their eyes open for snakes which hide in the bushes. The community prefers to drink this water and uses it to cook and bath. They admit this water is not clean, but it is better than not having any at all. It's not good because we don't have any water apart from that. That one. We want government to build, uh, to provide a uh, ball hole or pipe bone water for us. The water is, uh, is not good at all. Even though the water, when you went and see the water, you, you, you can't even know that it's water. The water even says a dead sea, the rubbish are inside the water. We put our legs even into the water, so the water is not good. It is not just good water they lack. There is no health clinic and no toilet facilities. They use the bushes. If someone is sick or someone is pregnant, we have to take them to go or better before they do treatment for them. If someone is sick, then we don't to send the person to the hospital. Maybe we will call car. If you don't have car, we take moto. We send moto to them and then take the person. If you cry when the person is pregnant, then we are going on the way the person born the baby. They will just drop the person down. Then they will send another, another the, the driver will say that they don't want any blood in there. Car. So they will call another car and kind of take the person to another hospital to go. That's the office, hospital that we are going to. And it sometimes happens because it's not all of them that have that one, the ones that some have. It's not all of us that have it. So some people do go to bush and through that, so many, thing ha so many things happen to them and there is nothing we can do about it. The good news, though, is that most of the children living in Kogaji go to school. The children have big dreams and are confident they can achieve a lot, despite the challenges they face. I want to become a nurse. I want to take care of a person that is sick. When education is not in any community, the community cannot move forward. Like, example like this. This, uh, we have school, but only primary that we have. We don't have the GSS. So we want the education to come and build the GSS too for us so that the community can move forward. I want to become a journalist in the future. If you go to school, you can become somebody in the future. So if you just turn on your set, you're still watching News at 8 on Joy News. Business News comes up next after this break. Business News is brought to you by GCB Bank. Your bank for life. Make your change with Airtel.
Back to the news, let's now get on to some business. And the Ghana Statistical Service says it will prepare a new basket for the producer price index in 2016 once all necessary surveys are conducted. Now the rebased is expected to capture crude oil, which is not specifically included in the current basket used for the computation of the producer price index. The current base used for the computation of producer inflation was put together in 2006 at a time when Ghana had not started drilling crude oil in commercial quantities. We are only capturing it in the GDP, but we are not capturing oil in the PPI. We do capture petroleum products under manufacturing, but uh, for crude oil, it's part of mining, and at the time we were doing the rebase in, in 2006, we were not extracting. A census of businesses and industries has already been conducted early this year to provide the basis for the rebasing. The list will serve as a sampling frame for us to uh, use to select a sample of all industrial establishments and conduct more detailed uh, 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 survey to get information on the activities of these establishments so that we can use that information to prepare the, the new basket uh, for the rebasing. So hopefully we are going to do the survey in 2015. Once that is done, by 2016 we should have rebased. Meanwhile, the producer price inflation increased to 37.5% in November 2014, representing a 2.6 percentage point decrease from the 40.1 percent recorded in October 2014. The things that we buy at the factory gates, their prices have risen by 37.5 percent. So it means things are more costly. Domestic producers are having to price their goods at a higher level than before. According to the statistical service, the producer price inflation went up starting November 2013, recorded consistent increment over 11 months period before starting to decrease in September 2014. Now let's talk to this important commodity called petroleum, where former VRA boss Charles Rikubrove says he would soon turn to court to compel the National Petroleum Authority to reduce prices of petroleum products. The price of crude oil has gone down to about 57 uh, dollars per barrel, but the National Petroleum Authority has argued that it can only reduce prices if it is able to clear all the debts owed importers of the products. But Dr. Rico Broby insists there is no justification for keeping prices unchanged, looking at current developments on the world market. He described the NPA's position as a sham, saying, as far as I'm concerned, I do not accept the argument about over-recovery or under recovery. NPA operates under a law. It cannot decide when to apply the law and when not to apply the law. So it is a sham argument to say government is recouping the money to pay the BDCs. This is irresponsible use of public finances. Although he admitted the country will go through a difficult moment if the bulk oil distribution companies, BDCs, are not paid and are unable to import crude, he said that is a responsibility government alone should bear. Meanwhile, government has been asked not to succumb to mounting pressures by sections of the public for oil prices to be reduced. Senor Hossi, chief executive officer of the Chamber of Bulk Oil Distribution Companies, warned that if we don't have a clear mechanism which the banks now see as the over recovery for paying the debt we will dump it. we will be dumbfounded uh, will dump funding confidence again and we will go back to june this is not politics so the earlier everybody stops the politics about petrol the better So the Christmas mood is gearing up and as businesses get ready to wrap up for the year, dealers in poultry and good do not seem to be having a good end of year sale. Some of the traders Joy News spoke to say sales have been slow and are still hoping it picks up before the festive season ends. There were mixed responses from poultry farmers Joy News spoke to on Christmas Eve. While some complained about the low pace of business, others said business was yet all right. 
Those who were yet to experience a boom blamed the situation on the harsh economic environment. Some of the customers interviewed said they were in the market to buy because it's Christmas. Well, you know, for the, because of the Christmas, so I can think it's okay. Because of the Christmas? Yeah. But after Christmas, you will get less than this. Yeah. On average, a layer costs 25 Ghana cities, while turkey and broilers cost 40 and 30 Ghana cities respectively. Goods are going for at least 150 Ghana cities. The traders, however, say the Eid celebrations brought them much better sales. And they told me the business, it makes much more. It invite for the business. So the business, they, it manage. Yeah. You know, it be people here and talk with you. Yeah, it's okay. Which, what's the difference? The difference last year is better than this year. Yeah. Right. We have sold three. Three? Yes. Um, so the market has been good? Yes, it's good. Yes. So the market no good. This year, sir, the Christmas I no understand. After uh, 20th to 24th, you no good. I no I no sell anything, so I don't know the market this year will do. And they sell like good, but the Christmas day I don't know. I don't know where I can talk again. This 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 year they no good for the Christmas. Than this Christmas, Edna Quetes report. That was. Pretty sad. Let's get international and where Sony Pictures is to distribute its film, The Interview Online, after a cyber attack and a row over its release. The film will be offered on a dedicated website, seethinginterview.com, as well as via Google and Microsoft services. Sony had previously pulled the film, whose plot centers on a plan to assassinate North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. The decision to cancel screenings had had been criticized by U.S. President Barack Obama. Since then, several hundred independent cinemas across U.S. have come forward offering to show the title. Now, the digital deal will mean the film is unable through Google services, YouTube and Play, and Microsoft's Xbox video platform. So that's it for the business segment. We'll be back with the international news. Business news was brought. So welcome back to News at 8 now to one of my favorites in that sport where coach Avram Grant has named a 31-man uh, provisional squad for the 2015 African Cup of Nations in Equatorial Guinea next month. Debut call-ups have been handed to five Ghanaian players based in Europe with former and the 20 midfielder Franke Champo returning to the side. Defender Samuel Inkum, who plays in the MLS with Houston Dynamos, has also returned to the squad that will begin preparations for the tournament. Here's the full list of players. Goalkeepers Razak Braima, Miranda Spain, Adam Steven, Adriana Stars, Fatao Dauda Ashgold, and Ernest Soa, Don Bosco, DR Congo. Defenders Harrison Affle, John Boy, Jonathan Mensah, Jeffrey Swam, Awal Mohammed Kwabna Eduse, Baba Rahman, Jima Edwin, Samuel Inkum, Daniel Amate, midfielders Rabiu Mohammed, Emmanuel Ajiman Bedu, Efriye Akwa, Solomon Asante, Christian Achu, Mubarak Wakasu, Andri Ayu, Alfred Duncan, Albert Adoma, Frank Echampo, Edukofi, Ibrahim Moro and strikers Jordan Ayu, Abdul Majid Waris, Asamoah Jan, Kwesi Apia, and David Akam. So let's see how sports is going on across borders. And Jose Mourinho admits he has no chance of signing Barcelona's Lionel Messi for Chelsea because of UEFA's financial fair play restrictions. The Blues last month announced. 
Welcome back to Joy News at 8. And let's now get jiggy with some showbiz. And Chief Executive Officer of Goodies Music, Isaac Abeku Edu, has been released from prison. Goodies, who was serving a 13-year jail term for possessing 80 pellets of cocaine, was released from the Insawan prison on Tuesday, December 23 was released from the Insawan prison Tuesday, December 23, 2014, after serving six years of his sentence. It is not clear yet why he was granted an early release. Goodies before his incarceration produced several musicians, including Ms. Bell, Lord Kenya, Tic Tac, and VIP, among others. He was arrested on April 23, 2008 at the Kotoka International Airport for attempting to traffic cocaine to London. Investigations revealed that he was possessing 80 pellets of cocaine. He was sentenced on November 26, 2008 by an Accra Circuit Court, having been found guilty of exporting narcotic drugs without lawful authority. And our female singer, Miss Bell, is set to celebrate her 10 years of existence in the music industry with a concept that Miss Bell Red Concert. She says the Miss Bell Red Concert will become an annual event. Very famous for her loved theme songs and what seems to be seductive dance moves on stage, Miss Bell has launched a comeback with a bank and she's calling on all her fans and music patrons to watch out for her. Miss Bell took a long break from music as she took time off to enjoy motherhood. Launching her comeback, which also happens to be her 10th anniversary in the music industry, Ms. Bell mentioned that as part of the 10 years anniversary, there will be a week-long celebration, which is set to start from the 3rd to 7th of February 2015, adding that there will be a concert crowning the week-long celebrations, which is on the 7th of February 2015. The concept is dubbed Ms. Bell Red Concert, and it will become an annual concert. As part of the 10 year celebration, I will have week long activities. The direction will be mainly towards women and children empowerment. As passionate as I am about my music, I equal that same passion to issues relating to women and children, hence the week long activities, which will start from the 10th to the 7th of February. We'll echo more on that. Details of the celebration and the event will be made available to the press and also on my website. The second thing I want to talk about in the new single, Legi Legi. This December and the new year festive season, we're hosting the Sing and Win promotion. All that my fans have to do is to record 15 seconds video singing the chorus of the new single, Legi Legi. They should post it on Instagram with the hashtag Legi Legi or tag it to me at Miss Bell Music. The Miss Bell Red concert comes at a time when the singer just released a single called Legi Legi. She promises fans a lot from the year 2015. Well, all the best, Miss Bell. Now that's all for the news at 8. That's it for Showbiz, and so we'll be back shortly on News at 8. So that's where we draw the curtains. But before we go, let's look at stories making headlines and commissioning. Uh, begins, water begins to flow at Adenta after the commissioning of the Pong Water Works, but only for a few hours, leaving residents disappointed. Figures from the Ministry of Health Adolescent Development Report reveals as many as over 16,000 adolescents underwent abortion in 2011. And Kolebu Teaching Hospital announces strategic plan to enhance its operations in 2015. And business livestock traders adopt wait and see approach as customers file in slowly to buy their wares. 
And elsewhere, Nigerian army places ban on vehicular movement in Bruno and Yobe states from Christmas Eve to Sunday to avoid militant attacks. For more news, log on to my joy online. That's it for the bulletin. My name is Aisha Ibrahim, and on behalf of the production team, I wish you a Merry Christmas.